Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I've finished taking all the data I need using my GT81, and it's time to create the set of flats that I'll use in calibrating the data. I'll be using my Pegasus Astro Flatmaster for the first time, at least in an operational sense. I put out a video on this sometime back when I first got the Flatmaster, but this is the first time to actually use it and to use it with this telescope. And in addition, I'm going to take a look at the number of frames that I use in computing the averaged master flat, master dark flat, and master dark that I use in calibrating the light frames. Let's get started. The way I'm taking my flats is I take them indoors. I've got a flat master that has the aperture size that can handle my C925, so it's a bit large in terms of diameter to put on top or balance on top of a scope like this GT81. I'm afraid a little gust of wind will knock it off if I do this outside. So I like to take the flats inside and under repeatable conditions, so I, I place the telescope on a couple of 2x4s to line up the optical axis of the telescope with the center of the flat master. Then I put a box over that to cut out most of the external light because I want to be able to take flats both during the day and during the night and then finally put a towel over that just to block out uh, some of the extra excess light and it gives me reproducible flats uh, any time of day or night so that makes it a bit more convenient to deal with. Now another thing that I'm doing with the flats this time I'm taking flats with the camera sensor cooled down but I'm only cooling it down to a positive 10 degrees that's cooler than what it is in the house but not the minus 10 degrees C that I go to outside when I'm taking lights. I just want to be consistent with the temperature and with the corresponding dark flat so that I can extract out that uh, dark current noise from the flat data. And I will use the Flatmaster control software that comes with the Flatmaster. This allows you to, if you go into settings here, you connect up to the Flatmaster and then that will automatically turn the Flatmaster on to full power at 100%. I crank it back to 50%. I find that that works better. And then I can set up an imaging sequence with the appropriate times and just crank through the flats uh, in a more or less automated fashion. Now I prefer to control the flat master using the Pegasus Astro software. I realize that Nina and I think APT does as well have an interface to the flat master but frankly for as simple as this is it's easier just to turn the flat master on uh, independently. I have the seven filters that I typically use, luminance, red, green, blue, uh, and then the SHO combination. I cool the camera down to a minus 10 degrees C when I'm taking light frames. Uh, luminance lets in the most light, so it has the shortest exposure time at a gain of 50. The red, green, and blue, I use 100 seconds at a gain of 50. And then for the narrow band filters, I use 400 seconds at a gain of 139. And then, of course, I need to have darks that correspond to each one of these unique configurations. So that gives me uh, three master dark files that I use in calibrating each filter that I use in taking lights. On the flat side, my goal here, and this is a bit of a ch departure from what I've done in the past, I'm going for a targeting an ADU level much closer to the ADU level that I'm getting in my light frames. In my light frames, I'm getting an ADU level between 1 to 2,000. Here the idea is just to keep the peak of the histogram of your light frame off the left edge and yet not so far off to the right that you start clipping the brightness of uh, many or most of the stars in the field. And that's led me to think that maybe I want to make sure that my flats are down in that low illumination end as well and they might do a better job of compensating for variations in uh, optical brightness across the sensor if the uh, ADU level of the flat is comparable to the ADU level of the light frame. When I'm taking flats, I just have to keep note of the illumination level for the flat master, in this case 50%, and I'll be cooling the uh, sensor down to a positive 10 degrees. And then, because I'm targeting a, an ADU level, I just find the different exposure settings given the appropriate gain that gives me roughly that 10,000 ADU, and you can see there's quite a bit of variation all the way from 14 seconds for the 
sulfur 2 filter down to 0.3 seconds for the luminance filter. But that also means that when I take dark flats, I need a dark flat associated with each one of these. So a dark flat at 0.3 seconds, gain of 50, and with the centrical down to plus 10, and same goes for the others. In one case, I was able to have the red and the blue use the same exposure time, so that one, I don't need another dark flat for that. But in general, you're going to need a dark flat for each of your filters, because each of the filters will, generally speaking, have a different exposure setting if your objective is to target a specific or near specific ADU level. The advantage of the flat panel is that it gives you the opportunity to just reuse these exposure settings because you can reproduce the illumination setting uh, with the flat panel uh, much more accurately than you can say using t-shirt flats outside. I also set up a corresponding imaging sequence for flats and dark flats where each of the exposure times is entered along with the corresponding filter and the corresponding gain and offset set and one of the questions that I want to address here is that I usually take 30 frames for my darks my dark flats and my flats and now I'm questioning whether or not uh, I really need 30 frames or do I need more frames well I did a little study with the darks dark flats and flat frames uh, using the the data I've collected recently and I think it tells an interesting story uh, if I take a look at this uh, the upper curve here this is the uh, flats I took with the blue filter I just use this as an example and what you what I'm doing is using the I'm going into Pix Insight which each one of these uh, frames and I'm assessing or having it calculate the noise level using the image analysis script and noise evaluation in Pix Insight with just one image you can imagine that the noise level is high uh, but as you average five of those frames together, you drop down in noise. And if you average 10, you drop down a good bit more, 15, 20, and so on. But here's the thing. What we're looking for is for this curve to flatten out so that we have properly identified, properly characterized, uh, on average, the level of noise in a flat frame so that when we use this master flat, we will, at least on average, be properly compensating for the optical variation across the sensor. If you look at this, it appears that uh, we're still going down a bit. Yeah, we're, we're getting close. It's, the curve is flattening out. But to my eye, I would prefer to have, instead of 30 frames, maybe 35 to 40 frames, because I don't think that I've quite converged here, which means that I'm taking out more noise than I should be. The story is a little bit different with the dark frames. I have a one frame and then averaging 5, 10, again, the same story, all the way out to averaging 30 dark frames. And you'll notice that we converge quite rapidly, at least with this cooled sensor that I'm using with my ASI 1600. After I've averaged together 15 or 20 frames, I've pretty much fully characterized the noise level in whichever dark set I'm using, whether the 500 second gain 139 dark set or the 150 second gain 50 dark set. The story is basically the same. With darks, or dark flats, I can pretty much assume that I've properly characterized the noise with only 15 to 20 averages. Maybe I'm not doing the best job possible with the flat frames and I probably need to average a bit more. For you guys using a non-cooled sensor such as a DSLR, you might find that this curve won't apply and I suggest you go kind of do something similar to this. Take your 30, 40, whatever frames you're doing and then look at the noise level of different averages of those frames. If the curve flattens out for you, then you're good to go. If there's still a trend line down, like I'm showing in the flat frame data, then you may need to increase the number of images you use in your averaging. For flat frames and light frames, the story is kind of similar. I'm not using a master bias. I'm The bias, which is a measure of the read noise when, when you read off the data from the sensor and send it down the line back to your PC, that read noise is captured by the bias frame, by the master bias. I'm not using an explicit master bias file. The master bias is included by definition in the master dark frame, so we don't want to include that twice. So there is no master bias uh, the way I'm doing this. Instead, I have master dark frame 
with the same imaging parameters as the light frames and a master dark flat frame with the same imaging parameters that I'm using for the corresponding flat frame. Of course, when you're calibrating flat frames, there is no master flat, but in calibrating the light frames, I'm using the calibrated version of what I get over here as a master flat frame, and that's what goes in here as the master flat. When I say that the bias isn't included, the bias is included in the dark frames because I have specific dark frames tailored to the corresponding light or flat frames there is no need to tick the optimize box here to alter the background of the dark frames to match the background of the light or the flat frame because they are already matched by virtue of the fact that I use the same imaging parameters of exposure, temperature, gain, etc. So that's why we don't have to tick that. Okay, so in summary, I'm using the Pegasus Astro Flat Master. I have the larger Flat Master so that it covers the aperture of my C925 and uh, also therefore the smaller aperture uh, refractors that I have. The, uh, the Flatmaster is a good piece of hardware. It does provide a repeatable, controllable, uh, low-level light source for taking flats. The problem with it is it's rather expensive for what it is. Before you run out and buy one of these, I would suggest you take a look uh, at what others are doing. There are much cheaper alternatives, for example, using a dimmable light box. You can get them from Amazon for heck less than 50 bucks and if you're only dealing with the smaller refractors you can probably get it for less than 25 bucks worth a test anyway both nina and apt provide an interface and can control the flat master i've just decided it's much easier just to use the pegasus astro software to control the flat master for those of you who are using a video device to take flat such as an ipad or a computer monitor a tv etc those screens have refresh rate you want to be having a long enough exposure that that refresh band is able to pass through the image without being captured i've done various things including using adu levels up to 50 percent to 30 percent i'm going to try this experiment out of of trying to match my adu level uh, of the flats with the adu level of my lights thinking that maybe if there's some sort of nonlinearity or sensor characteristic for low levels of light that i'll do a better job of capturing that effect in these flats i suspect that flat adu level is not a critical issue for for most modern day cameras i've always been using 30 frames don't know where i got that number I got it from somewhere and i did find though that for darks and dark flats that it's actually overkill to use 30 frames i'm getting a very good and consistent measure of the noise level associated with the dark or dark flat with just 15 to 20 frames. Now, on the other hand, I found that my 30 frames that I'm using for my flats is probably not enough. So I believe in the next round of flats I take, I'll be going up to 35 to 40 frames. Well, that's all for today, guys. Clear skies. Talk to you later.